MPK, the nutrients that everyone loves. Everyone loves applying MPK to get this rapid growth in their plants or it seems like in their rapid growth. And so today in this video, we'll be talking about the function and I guess MPK in the plant. If you don't know who I am in this channel, I'm Till Simmons. I've created this channel to help you learn more about agriculture, to help your studies or your farm, or just if you want to know more about the plants you're growing at home, then this is for you. This whole channel is for free. There's a whole bunch of other videos, so go check them out. Um, it's free, and the only thing I ask of you to do is share with a friend that you think might benefit from learning about MPK and the actual function it has in our plants. Awesome. Let's get into it. Awesome, so NPK. So NPK is probably the most overused fertilizer um, that we use. So NPK stands for nitrogen, phosphorus, and potassium, and typically you'll find them on every fertilizer label, um, typically in a ratio of each or by their weights. Inside the plant, nitrogen makes up about 1.5% of the plant dry weight. Um, which is crazy because in the previous video we talked, uh, we just talked about how carbon makes up 45%. So in the grand, grand scheme of things, it actually doesn't make up that much, but it's the fourth most abundant nutrient in our plants. Then we have phosphorus, 0.2% um, and potassium at 1%. So in terms of our forms that we can get, say nitrogen, we can get them in nitrate, ammonia, or amino acids and amino sugars, which is more beneficial for the plant because it conserves uh, energy in the converting process. And typically these can be um, gained by the plant by um, eating microbes, uh, as well as eating um, other plant material. So the forms that we can get phosphorus in is uh, hydrogen phosphate or dihydrogen phosphate. Typically the dihydrogen phosphate, so di meaning two, so two lots of hydrogen. The hydrogen phosphate you find in more basic soils, whereas our hydrogen phosphate you find in more acidic soils. And that all of this is really just driven by chemistry. Most things in our soil, I want to say everything because you have that biological component, but most things in our soil is driven by just chemical processes. And so when you have a higher pH or a lower pH, it's going to change the availability of different things and what reacts with different things. So potassium we find as itself as uh, potassium in its, uh, its ionic form. So then in terms of their functions, nitrogen is probably most important for protein synthesis. So it's used in all proteins. So it's used in making proteins or amino acids, as well as nuclear material, nucleic acid. So that's used in DNA and RNA. So the reason why everyone loves applying nitrogen is because you get this greening effect in our plants. And so when we have chlorophyll, which contains a lot of nitrogen or four amounts of nitrogen, um, the plant then suddenly makes a lot more uh, chlorophyll. And so it increases photosynthesis. So the main function in phosphorus is in the production of ATP or adenosine triphosphate. And that is really this thing that carries around energy throughout our plant and in our own bodies. And so ATP is almost like a currency of energy that plants and um, just organisms in general use. And so if we want to transport energy from one part of the plants that leaves into the roots, we want to transfer um, ATP. So that's going to be transferring energy. Phosphorus also has an important function in the building of lipids as well. And then potassium is a massive regulator of osmotic pressures, which is really important when we want to have a, a nice tur turgid uh, plant. And it also has a really important function in uh, regulating plant activities. So photosynthesis or even uh, rubisco, which is an enzyme, so it activates that. There's a bunch of other enzymes that it activates too. Now with the regulating of osmotic pressure, that's going to really impact the way that nutrients, water, um, and even like uh, carbohydrates are transported across our plant. So, so when plants want to transport nutrients, they load potassium into a particular part of the plant to increase the osmotic pressure. And so what happens when you have a high pressure and a low pressure, you get movement between those two areas. So that's how plants um, transport a lot of um, nutrients and carbohydrates. And, and they do that by changing the potassium concentration in, in the fluid within the plant or osmotic pressure. Now, as a really good way to see how uh, nitrogen and phosphorus is used, this is ATP. So this is the molecule of ATP. So we have our adenine uh, here. So this is a uh, amino acid, which is used in um, the building of proteins. You can see here, we've got one, two, three, four, five different nitrogen, nitrogen atoms in the protein, or oh, the amino acid here. 
all amino acids have nitrogen in them. So if we don't have any nitrogen, we're not going to get amino acids and proteins. You can see here, we need nitrogen to make our amino acids. In terms of phosphorus, we have our phosphate uh, molecule here. We need phosph uh, phosphorus to make those molecules. If we don't have one of those, we can't make ATP. Um, and then we, we can't move energy around our cell. Cool, so that's it for NPK. Very important. They're very important uh, essential nutrients in our plants. Now it's important to know there's, there's a whole bunch of other functions that these nutrients are used for. Um, but when we get the most impactful functions that these nutrients have, these are probably it. But there are a whole bunch of others, so make sure to look them up. I'm not going to go over them now. But when you think of these nutrients, think of protein synthesis, ATP or energy movement, um, osmotic pressure and transport. Awesome. Well, thank you very much for watching. My name's Till Simmons. Cheers.